You know, Barb has always been really generous with the advice. <laughs> she, she still is. <laughs> and she's, um, you know, involved in their life. They like hanging around her, so they keep inviting her, you know, uh, places, and she shows up. Congratulations on season two of Run the World. Um, we were nervous because we know that, um, you know, Ella was not going to be in season two. She's so on a great adventure. Yes, yes. yes. Which we cannot spill, but without the character Ella in season two, were you nervous about how your trajectory would go on the show as far as your character was concerned? No, not at all, because there's so many things that Barb has um, that um, I think they leveraged, which was her, um, her, her veteran status as in, you know, in the, the space of media. And um, also that she's a, she's a boss. They're talking about running the world. She is a boss. So mm -hmm. to have that conversation, um, which is generational between people who are trying to become and a person who's arrived would always going to be there. So I was really excited to see what would happen. Now, that was something that I was going to segue into my next question, because we love Barb, as, you know, being the boss that she is. And I really love the way that she was immersed into the season with the rest of the cast and her being like a hilarious voice of reason or mentor of sort. And I feel like Barb really exudes where black women are now in the workplace and doing similar things as having multiple jobs. Oh, for sure multiple hats. And in season one, something that stood out to me as a journalist was you told Ella the importance of being adaptable. How timely do you feel as if that portion of the storyline is? And do you think that there's still a generational divide in terms of adaptability and flexibility? That's a great question. Really brilliant. It's everything, being adaptable, being flexible, being able to see and read the room you know, people would call it um, um, move, stick and move, know when to stay and know when to move on. Those are, that's everything. And you usually only learn those things through experience. Sometimes people, person could have an instinct for it and it could work. Some people move too fast and they miss the opportunity. So it's how to adapt not only to things around you, but to how to adapt to how you grow. You know, some people don't want to don't want to admit that they've grown away from a person or grown away from doing a certain thing. And you've got to accept that life is about growth. It's about <clears throat> forward progression. And so um, I think that very much in my life, I've tried to adapt as Erica Alexander and um, grow by teaching myself new skill sets, whether it was writing, uh, doing more directing, um, uh, creating bigger uh, challenges for me. If I didn't think the, uh, the industry was giving it to me, I tried to, to make a way for myself. And that was me adapting. That was me adapting in real time. Now we see, like I mentioned, um, you know, you being the voice of reason in this, this group of talented yet ambitious and sometimes all over the place millennials. What was your take on um, her role within the group in season two? Um, she's uh, a life coach. You know, Barb has always been really generous with the advice. <laughs> she, she still is. <laughs> and she's, um, you know, involved in their life. They like hanging around her, so they keep inviting her, you know, uh, places. And she shows up um, because she, she is an enthusiastic person. And I really love that there is a generational conversation in this series to break the myth that you have to stay within your so-called peer sets. What's a peer? Some people think of it as an age. They might think of it as a career. There's nothing like that. Your tribe is made up of different many ages, different many skill sets, different many careers, and different places. And so she, I think, builds out the tribe in a really strong way. Now, we obviously loved you in Living Single, and now mm -hmm. this show is also centered in, on Black women and Black women empowerment. Why do you feel as if this format is such a big formula to the success of a lot of the, the shows that we've seen that have stood the test of time and it keeps becoming a recurring theme? That's another good question. You know, when you started to ask me that, I started thinking about um, uh, the harmony that women have when they bring their voices together. If you think about it in the 50s, um, and there's a lot of harmony, but the thing that comes to mind is, she's a boogie woogie bugle boy of company B. And somebody goes, he's a boogie woogie bugle boy of company You need the bass, you need the middle, you need the high, you need somebody, he's a booty what? That makes an amazing sound. And then when you put them together in terms of personality, you have a harmony that feels like one note, but is many different layers. And I think that that's why people love to see um, series with uh, ensemble companies. And that's what this is. 
Now, in terms of Barb's storyline moving forward, now that we see that, you know, she serves a, a true purpose in the group. Um, I, I like the fact that you said something about when we think about peers, we think about them being in our specific age group. And I've also, mm-hmm. I've always tended to like friend older. Um, and I think that I've learned a lot, you know, within those circles. But what do you, for, how do you foresee her storyline developing outside of, you know, being a mentor or just hanging out with the crew? What would you like to see as far as her character development is concerned and, you know, potentially season three and onward? Sure. I would love to see her um, uh, start to take on the advice that she's giving and see how she applies it in her life. Right now, she's able to tell them how to apply it in there. But it really would be interesting to see that maybe behind the door, she's an, a, a, a mess. And we do see that a little bit. She's a little bit much, much more messy than she gives on. And I love the mask, that she has a mask. She, you know, she's out there taking risks and doing that. But when you take the mask off, who is she? What, what does she have to deal with? How hard is it to be successful, to keep that up? Um, can you keep that up? How, what kind of toll did it take on her? What kind of self-care is she giving herself, if at all? She may look like she has it together. It'd be really good to see her world. Now, even though um, there were some changes this season, I love the fact that we were really able to delve into um, each individual storyline a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Whose story did you uh, did you enjoy the most watching in season two? Wow, they all have great stories. I really liked Corbin's story because she's dealing with things that have to do with running up against her ambitions and somebody else's design for her. Who, who, and and it's a, it's a healthy relationship, but it's a really complicated question. And I and I really love Brisha because she's out there trying to build as an entrepreneur, and she doesn't know as much as she needs to, and she finds out that there's roadblocks ahead. They have a, a great psychologist, and when you're talking about what they could do with Barb, it would be great to see them in group therapy, all of them all Barb included talking, including the men, like group separate and group. I think that would be so hilarious. We've never seen it. I would love to see it. And overall, how are you hoping that um, fans react to this season? Um, As you mentioned, we can't give out too many spoilers, but there are some fun additions. I love that we um, get to see their individual families in this season. I thought that made for um, deeper conversations, especially with like successful women in that age group and then probably in a lot of their cases, they were the ones who made it. So I think that um, is also very timely um, with conversations going on, especially across social media. So there's a lot of things that people can pull, you know, from this season specifically, but what do you think the takeaways are? I think the takeaway is that um, the time is now haul ass, you really don't have as much time as you think you do. And move forward with confidence. If you don't have confidence, you don't need it to move forward. You'll gain it as you go forward. And I think that you can see them working that out, but to actually apply it in your life and to try to take that away that no one really knows. And yet people do know some things. So figure out some things that are wise to take with you and you know, shrug off the rest and see, see where you land with it and, and create a new universe. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Like I said, I hope we get way more seasons to come. I love Barb's character. She reminds me of some of my older friends. So I love it. I love it. I love her too. I <laughs> yes. love her too. You know, I, 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 I really appreciate your compliments and, and thanks for the great questions. Wonderful. Of course. Well done. Uh, hopefully I'll talk to you next year.